Yo, what's going on? Let's turn on the uh, live chat. I forgot my, <laughs> forgot the most important part about this live stream. <clears throat> Excuse me. My AirPods so I can stunt on you guys. What's going on? Let's see who shows up today. Yo, they uh, trimmed the tree up here and there's not as much shade as there used to be, so I'm kind of struggling already. Uh, James K, certified T3 by and moderator, first one here. Isaac, Jethro, Nolan, Jake, Car Guy 427, uh, Green Spence, Spence G in the house, Lyndon, shine brand like a diamond, Canine Cardio Company of Rhode Island, LLC. What's going on, Rhode Island? Back home from where I'm from, Dean. Good morning, bro. Dean's here, so we can rant all we want as long as Dean gives us the authorization. Um, James K, certified T3 by a moderator, says, truth is I was waiting in line for the live show since last night. Cowboy. Ray, what's going on? William J, certified T3 by Brenman Good. Uh, what is up? Good afternoon. Asian MBNZ, says Vietnamese coffee. We got the, let's see, did they write it? Oh, they didn't write, usually they write V-I-C. Uh, Vietnamese coffee on deck. Mm. I don't need a watch, I've got a donk. Yee yeah, yee! Yeah. Uh, what's going on, Jonathan? <laughs> Jacob Mellon, best watches for trick or treating? Uh, probably an Invicta. You gotta wear something truly scary. Uh, Shy Town, California, certified T3 bot is wearing a Vostok Amphibia. I didn't recall doing a wristwatch check yet. Boy. Uh, Fabris is here. Dan says T3. Uh, Rajat from India, what's going on? Sam Brooks is here, very good viewer, Sam Brooks. Uh, Tom Mulrooney from Ireland. What's up on the morning to you? Uh, here anyway. Dean says, T3 rants are always welcome. Well, you know, tradition here on the on the Friday, on the, uh, or Saturday q and I gotta ask authorization from Dean to uh, rant. Nikolaj from Denmark, what's going on? Manuel, uh, Matthias from Sweden. Benjamin Handelman, certified T3 from Alhambra. Heck yeah. Uh, you should be, if you're in Alhambra, you should be getting dim sum right now at Lunasia. Michael Berry, uh, Halloween watches would, uh, would be a good list. Yeah, the, maybe I'll do that episode this week um, and just pick some really scary atrocities. You guys heard it first. Uh, Shytown, California, did you decide who, who gets to inherit the beard? Uh, are you planning on me dying soon? Uh, that's kind of a, mm, I don't like that question. Uh, Elvis, very cool name, says, why are all the cars on the back straight from the 90s? Uh, I don't think this is. That's actually a new, like, CRV, I think. This probably is. And then that is a Prius from, like, the 2000s. Um, but that is an old person's home. So that might explain it. Um, this is uh, a senior assisted living uh, place. A very nice one, but it is. So that might explain that. Uh, Green says, is your coffee iced? If, uh, if so, it really demonstrates the difference in climate between LA compared to the rest of the, the cold rest of the world. Yes, this is iced. Vietnamese coffee is typically iced though. It's very rare that you get Vietnamese coffee and it's hot. It's typically iced, um, or at least here anyway. James K, certified T3 and moderator, says, I will carry the mod weight today. Andrew Hannum says, hi, James. <laughs> He's also a moderator. Uh, do they offer toupee fitment? Probably, that's, that's why I'm here, is because they help me with my uh, toupee. I'm like, hey, can you uh, put it on my head for me every weekend, please? <clears throat> Patented Insta timeout. Well, hopefully we won't have to exert our the full force of our, uh, our moder moderators, but... I will not be scared to use the full force of my moderation if I have to. Uh, Raul says, hi, bro, from Crown Point. Always watch you. Thanks, brother. Uh, Jason Solo from Singapore. Jason, you got to send me uh, some chicken rice, bro. I want some, I want some uh, Singaporean chicken rice. Benjamin says, this chat is always lovely. Benjamin, bring me some uh, dim sum. <laughs> bring me some Lunasia. You got to wait in line for me, though. It's going to be about like a, a two-hour wait right now. So <laughs> if you could just go ahead and wait for me, I'll meet you there. Uh, Dean with the super chat says, my wife Jen says, Jory is hot. Uh, thank you. 
Um, but you know who's even hotter? Dean. Dean's way hotter. And Dean saves people's lives. All I do is complain about wristwatches. I am a shell of a man. Uh, Sam Brooks says, hit the like button. Uh, but, but I do, I'm, I'm blushing under the beard, by the way. I'm blushing. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Jack Butcher says, Jack Butcher, by the way, that's a very cool name, says, what is wrong with you video screen? I hope nothing's wrong with my video screen. It might look like I'm a bit washed out. Uh, and that's because they trimmed this tree uh, a few weeks ago, and now it doesn't offer as much shade as it used to. Um, but if I move over here, I'm halfway off the bench, but uh, over here. Yo, Braden Butcher, I don't know if you guys are related, but he's here too. Heck yeah. <whistles> we got two butchers in the Bailden. Now we need a Carl F. Bucherer. Not related at all. Um, contrast ratio. Yeah, when I, I, I look a little washed out when I'm over here, but I'm trying to get out of the sun, but so crazy. Uh, the, see, what happens is the earth is flat, um, but we still move around the sun. So it's, it, you know, the sun, we're always moving around. <clears throat> Andrew Hannum, certified T3 by M moderator says, all right, ladies and gents, have a great weekend. Jory, see you later. What the heck, man? Okay, James is going to carry the brunt of this, but uh, Andrew, thanks for showing up, man. Brian says, geez, you're best around nothings. Oh, you're the best around nothing to ever keep you down. Thank you. At first I was like, what is he saying? And then I was like, oh, I know what he's saying. Woo! <sighs> they made this coffee strong today. I, I already know that it's gonna... <sighs> I'm gonna get pretty lit. Paul <laughs> says the earth is flat. Uh, Paul, if you don't understand, uh, or if you're fairly new to this live stream, um, <clears throat> the whole joke is that early, early on, like the first few months of my channel, I reviewed my uh, Speedmaster Professional Man on the Moon 25th anniversary and Waba's here, what's going on? And uh, believe it or not, instead of getting like the trolls that, cause I used to get a lot, I mean, I still do get a, a ton of trolls in my comment section, but for some reason, when I started talking about space watches, I got a ton of flat earthers, like legit flat earther, earthers would write to me. Then they found my email, <coughs> excuse me. It was relentless. So I figured I'd just lean into it and uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna combat the narrative. I'm gonna be like, hell yeah, the earth is flat. So, William J says, uh, William J certified T3 bot says, sunny fall day here in mass. Heck yeah, dude, what's going on in New England? Paul says, I was sure you were kidding, crazy story though. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a funny joke, but it's, it's actually nuts how, uh, it's nuts how seriously people take it. You're allowed to have whatever beliefs you want. I, don't, I really don't care. But it's funny how when I talk about a watch um, that, you know, I, I did like a summation of the history of the watch and why it's a moon, it's considered a moon watch. And then there were people that were like the, the moon landing uh, deniers. And I was like, okay, I, that's interesting. And then, and then I got the flat earthers. And so then I had, to, I had this inner turmoil where I had to figure out which one was worse like who's dumber the the like moon landing deniers or the f flat earthers like I don't um yeah it, it's it's crazy and then I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a distinct crossover as well like I'm sure some of them are the same people uh Paul says impossible choices yeah lots of Priuses welcome to uh Welcome to Southern California, my friends. Um, oh, James K, certified T3 and moderator says, price drop on the King Seiko at the Time Teller shop. And he posted a link. Guys, um, I titled this ep I titled this live stream uh, price cuts at the uh, T3 shop because uh, as James said, I cut the price of the King Seiko $600, dude. It was over 1500 now it's under 1000 
It's around a $600 price cut, and that's not all. I cut the price of, uh, Connie's texting me, sorry. <laughs> I'm ignoring her right now. Um, she, uh, she wanted to tell me that she bought some more Halloween candles for the place, which is awesome. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. I, cu I cut the price of uh, the Tussauds and the Hamilton as well. So uh, there are four watches available and three have massive price cuts. Uh, the Tussauds is under $400. Uh, the Hamilton um, is $405. And then the King Seiko is 991 bucks and some change. So guys, uh, just to let you know, not to harp on this for too long, um, on October 7th, on this Monday, they're going back to their normal prices. So the King Seiko is going back to 1500 bucks. Uh, the Tissot is going up past 400 and the Hamilton's going to go back up to around 500. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Brian Mason, what's the difference between King Seiko movements and Grand Seiko movements? So I actually just did an episode, I just filmed an episode this week for next week. So please stay tuned uh, for Wednesday's episode. I talk about the difference between Grand Seiko and King Seiko. Uh, Spoiler alert, I suppose I can just spoil the episode. Essentially, um, way back when in Seiko's history, there was the Sua Sakosha factory and the Daini Sakosha factory. Two different divisions that survived uh, the war. Technically, Sua Sakosha was the only factory that survived World War II. Then they rebuilt the Daini factory. Um, they were both divisions under Seiko, uh, but they functioned independently. And so what ended up happening is Seiko, uh, the overall com company, wanted intra-company competition because they, th they figured if we could have two divisions uh, functioning independently of each other, competing against each other, eventually they will come up with the best products possible. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, Grand Seiko ended up coming from the Sua Sakosha factory and then King Seiko uh, followed up from the Daini uh, factory and what ended up happening is that Sua Sakosha ended up turning into Seiko Epson Corporation as we know it today. And then King Seiko or Daini uh, division turned into Seiko Instruments Limited. That's a long story, but I go more into in depth with that on the, uh, on the episode. So well, just watch the episode. Um, <clears throat> wristwatch check, everyone's yelling at me. Very special wristwatch check. get some light in here sorry guys I'm I can't see anything because of the because of the weird lighting here hold on hold on hold on what is going on I'm so sorry that was a butchered wristwatch check but it's because I can't see anything because the sun is is like washing out my screen right here uh, this is an old, what they call a uh, Calatrava dial, Vacheron, uh, from 1945. So sorry that I butchered that wristwatch check, but yeah. I'm now in the Holy Trinity, guys. I just bought a uh, Vacheron. <laughs> Reading comments. But guys, wristwatch check, tell me what you guys are wearing. <clears throat> A little info on this watch. A uh, solid 18 karat gold bracelet and case. Uh, hand wound movement, I'm gonna do an episode on it. Um, <clears throat> from 1945, black gilt dial. Uh, you can see it's, it's kind of a tropical dial at this point. Um, small seconds. Uh, sometimes they call these old Vacherons with these dials Calatrava dials, even though I know Calatrava is typically associated with Patek Philippe. Um, yeah, this, this was a huge uh, acquisition for me. Um, someone asked what my favorite, I think it was Chi-Town, California maybe? He asked what my favorite vintage uh, dress watch would be. Maybe an old Reverso or something like this. Ooh, Dean's wearing a very cool Oris. You guys should all follow uh, Dean over on Instagram. He, he has a very, uh, almost eclectic, like very interestingly curated collection of citizens and orients. 
and an Oris. Let's see, we got some Laurier Neptune uh, Hamilton Electric from 1958. Uh, those are very cool, but a uh, total headache to service if, if at all possible. Oris Aquas from Stephen Lee. Nolan's wearing a Seiko Belmatic, uh, one of my favorite vintage Seikos. Uh, Linden's wearing a Richard Legrand Odyssey. Um, Brian Mason, can't wait for that episode about King Seiko and Grand Seiko. Uh, Michael's wearing, or maybe he's, he meant this episode, talking about this. That's fine too. Um, James K, certified T3 by M Moderator, says, I've been informed that Jory will personally autograph any vintage watch purchased from the T3 shop during this live stream. Um, James is joking, but let me tell you guys, uh, for the people in the stream that have actually purchased anything from the Time Teller shop, uh, when you buy a watch, I write you guys a handwritten letter um, re with really nice itinerary and envelope and all that. Not that that's like a selling point, but it's the least I could do. Um, it's the least I could do for people that want to support the stuff that I'm doing here. So uh, yeah, every, every watch that you buy, I actually do spend the time to write you a handwritten letter and I do sign it. But that, I mean, that doesn't matter at all, but yeah. Sam Brooks says, do you use a Mont Blanc? Uh, I use my Mont Blanc uh, Meisterstuck every time uh, I, do, I sign those. So yeah, I do, because I'm, I'm in my office when I do it, so. Phil Thompson's wearing a G-Shock range, man. Heck yeah. <clears throat> uh, shank, shank, shank. I'm just gonna say Duda. Oh man, the sun is, is terrible right now. One sec. Is this better? Is this better? Oh, it's better over here. Um, Duda says, Jory, what do you think about the Emperor Tuna Marine Master 1000 uh, automatic? Will you buy one? I probably won't buy that one. I, uh, the next tuna I'm going to get, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. The next tuna I get is going to be the, uh, tuna spring drive with the, uh, Grand Seiko movement. Shottown, California certified T3 bot says, what's your signature warm weather cologne? I really like, this is kind of silly well maybe it's not it's not any sillier to talk about than anything else uh the cologne i typically wear when it gets warmer out is um one of the uh mont blanc legacies and i really like a new one that came out that's in a brown bottle so i really like the Le mont blanc legacy spirit which is in the white bottle i like the original mont blanc legacy in the black uh bottle and then they recently made a Mont Blanc Legacy in a brown bottle. And that's a much warmer scent. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with for the cooler months. But I think uh, Aqua de Joe is probably the best um, cologne from Giorgio Armani. Uh, Jake says, uh, did you hear about the <laughs> Did you hear about the woman in Canada who found a Paul Newman in a $25 sofa from a thrift store? Yeah, I read that article. That's nuts. For people who don't know what he's talking about, some lady bought a couch from like Goodwill uh, for like 25 bucks and there ended up being a, a Daytona in it worth like over $200,000. That's like crazier than winning the lottery because when you buy a lottery ticket, you're buying it with the hope that you win the jackpot. When you buy a couch from a thrift store, all you're expecting is the couch from the thrift store. So that's like, that is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. IRS intensifies. Woo. Man, they made it strong. Someone asked if the mom made it today. It's actually really funny. The, um, the daughters made it today, but I think they, I think they finally learned from their mom because this tastes whew, this tastes like how the mom makes it oh yeah steven is the name says hello beard boy uh benjamin with a super chat guys uh, thank you so much for the super chats they're they're welcome and and i appreciate them but they are not necessary uh it says why why i think he means what kind of mont blanc uh, the fountain pen version or the rollerball, I've got the 149 medium fountain pen. So here's why I, short answer is I use the rollerball and it's because I am left-handed. So writing, uh, using a fountain pen 
as a lefty is not as fun as it is when you're a righty because fountain pen ink does not dry as fast. And uh, when you're a lefty, as you guys know, you are writing over the words that you have written. So when there is um, wet ink on whatever you're writing, uh, it smudge is much easier. And using a fountain pen with that is uh, not fun. So uh, I use the rollerball for that reason. And I know there's hardcore pen collectors that are like, rollerballs are for casuals. Well, I'm a casual. I can only collect so many things right now. Uh, Christian says, yeah, I feel you, Jory. I'm a lefty and, and I get ink on my hands, but I don't care because I love using fountain pens. Exactly. Uh, I don't mind the ink on my hands so much as uh, if I spend time handwriting something and I smudge it, it looks very unprofessional and, it, and that's what really bothers me. So I don't want to do that. Um, Jonathan says he once bought a Rolex Daytona and it accidentally came with a used couch. Hey man, win-win. Kareem says, I'm left-handed too, and I write from underneath. Yeah, but then you're stuck, like, like messing around with your wrist. Sometimes what I try to do is angle the paper. That's what I did in grade school. They made us angle the paper if you were a lefty, so you wouldn't, like, smudge, but I don't do that anymore. Lyndon says, are on the wrist photos from the T3 shop you would like to know for size comparison? Yes, uh, Lyndon, every picture there is taken by me and it's on my wrist. Uh, for reference, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. So that's why I try to post lug to lug measurements on, on everything um, because lug to lug matters more than diameter, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> James. Sorry, I just, just got a phone call, my bad. <clears throat> Sam Brooks says, do you like Mont Blanc watches? Uh, I do like Mont Blanc watches. Uh, there's not one that I like. Well, no, that's that's not true. There there are a couple that I like uh, a ton. Um, can you guys hear me? Asif says audio is messed up. Can you hear me? You should be able to. Audio change. One second. One second. Because I got a phone call. And I had to... One sec. One sec, one sec, one sec. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Ugh. Man, people know not to call me during my Saturdays, and then they do anyway, and it's very, very annoying. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, what was I saying? Um, there are a few Mont Blancs. Oh, my phone's getting hot because of the sun. Damn it. Um, there are a few Mont Blancs that I really, really do like. And uh, one of which is uh, the, the Salmon Dial that I mentioned in my uh, Salmon Dial episode. That's one that I would absolutely love to have. Unfortunately, it's limited. And um, yeah. But there are a few Mont Blanc watches that I would really love to have. Uh, Christian says, I see you have AirPods. Are they as bad as the reviews make them out to be? I'm considering picking them up. I would not recommend these AirPods. These were a gift from Connie. Um, and they're very nice because I don't need, like, I don't have any wires, right? Uh, and um, so that's great. Uh, but the connectivity is terrible. Um, if you're in another place, where other people have Bluetooth items, like on a plane, like when you would use it, there's interference. Sometimes one cuts off. Sometimes you put it in your case. This is the normal case. I just have it in a uh, little leather holder. Um, sometimes you put these in the case and it doesn't charge or one, only one would charge and this and that. I would So until they like actually redo these, I would not recommend them. Laszlo, have a great one, brother. Um, Edmund Mendez says, which watch has the price cuts? Uh, I just realized I actually cut the price on all of them. So, uh, the King Seiko is nine ninety one and some change. Uh, that is, was initially 1565, I believe. And on Monday it goes back to that price. Uh, the Tissot, uh, was 
was 435 and now it is three something. And then the Hamilton is uh, 405 and it was in the 500s. So, um, and they all go back up to those prices on October 7th, on Monday. So guys, don't miss out. I'm trying to get these sold so I can bring in the next Connect collection and get prepared for uh, the holidays because that's going to be a big collection as well. Um, people are asking what watch I am wearing. Nineteen forty-five Vacheron small seconds. Eighteen karat gold. Emily Luna Leal says, can you give me a shout out? Well, I kind of just did. Also, what is your channel about? I'm new here. Uh, we talk about wristwatches. But the, these Saturday Q&As are just how my viewers talk to me. And I like talking to them. Guys, help her out. I, I assume Emily is a female. Uh, says, uh, new to your channel. Can you describe to me what your channel is about? Also, God bless and have a nice watch. God bless, Emily. Um, well, I've been on YouTube for about two years. Uh, predominantly talk about wristwatches. I'm the least serious wristwatch-based channel on YouTube. Um, and uh, the earth is flat. <laughs> James K. says, someone buy the Tussauds before I do. <laughs> Rob says, nice piece. Paul says, the most entertaining. Yeah, but the, the, the fact is, the, the number one complaint, and he cracks himself up. Yeah, the number one complaint I get is like, why didn't you tell, why don't you take watches seriously? Oh, you're going to lose followers. You're too childish in your videos. Oh, no one's going to subscribe to your channel. It's so funny, dude. Uh, the, <laughs> it's so funny. So the most hate I get are on my older videos, right? So I have videos, ep episodes from like a couple years ago. And when I was, and this is back when I was like, um, oh, thank you guys so much. I just hit 500 uh, subscribers. This is amazing. And then it'd be like, oh my God, guys, I hit a thousand subscribers. And that's like, oh my God, guys, I, I hit like, um, like way back when, and, and they were, you know, when I first started. And so people will, will go to those older episodes back when I didn't get very many views back when I, you know, didn't have, yeah, back when I was in my twenties. Um, and they will comment like today, like to this day, they'll be like, ha you don't take watches seriously enough. And that's why you don't have any subscribers. And they'll be like, <laughs> uh, you're not funny and you, and you try too hard and that's why no one's going to subscribe to your channel. It's like, dude, look at the date on this episode. It's from two years ago. And then look at the subscribers I have now. You're wrong. Michael has a good summation. He says, Emily, the channel is about his beard. Also watches. It's really about Jory, who is a great personality. Thank you so much. Uh, wristwatch check wristwatch check because we got some some people showing up guys i can't see if it's in focus because the sun is blocking my screen but i am wearing my gilt dial 18 karat gold vacheron small seconds from 1945 whoop someone bought the so someone bought the to so someone bought it William says, you're too funny. I'm going to unsubscribe. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Bernan says, yeah, 80,000 subs is not a lot. Um, I mean, I don't have, there, there are, I am a very small fry in, in, in the watch world, but also in YouTube, I'm, I'm an incredibly small fry, but, um, that being said, it's, it's, I don't know why you would put someone down, you know, for the, like, the amount of, those are vanity metrics. So I don't know why you'd put someone down for, for any amount of subscribers they have. It's just silly. 
Uh, Edmund Mendez bought the Tussaud. Congratulations, Edmund. I hope you enjoy the watch. Um, it's going to go through one final inspection, uh, one final pre-shipment inspection. And then uh, when that passes, which it will, uh, it's going to go straight to you. And you're going to get a handwritten note from me. Um, Franco. Yeah, Edmund. Edmund's in the stream, by the way. God, dude, this this sun. I wish we would just block out the sun. You know what? Screw climate change. Um, we need more climate change. We need a layer of smog to just block out. Not everywhere, just right here. Let's just get some smog going right here. Um, I'm actually, you know what? We're probably going to move positions because this is very annoying. Oh, wait. Maybe I'm not in the shadiest part. Is it better over here? No, it's not. My forehead's sweating. Guys, technical difficulties. One second. This is it's terrible. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here until... <laughs> anyway, that's it. Emily says, I only have 20 subs, lol. Well... The way you get more subscribers is you is you're, you have to be honest, consistent, and passionate, and that's that's all it takes. And don't get caught up in the in the vanity metri metrics of all of it. Um, anyway, now that I'm standing up away from the sun, uh, Edmund, thank you so much for um, thank you so 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 much for picking up the so. Uh, James K says let's get the Hamilton sold next. Next, um, guys, that Hamilton's gonna go up uh, past 500 bucks on Monday. And it, you will not find a watch that immaculate. Someone get that. And someone get the freaking King Seiko. I know the King Seiko is a lot of money. But for everybody that's been complaining, oh, you need to get another King Seiko on the site. You need to get another King Seiko on the site. You need to get another King Seiko on the site. I get a King Seiko. I get an incredibly rare King Seiko. And then nobody wants to buy it. It's like, what the heck? Um, Mr. Banana says, how do you maintain your sexiness? Dude, I honestly think it's genetics. I think it's come down to genetics. But how do I maintain it? I go to the... I, let's see. I eat a lot of red meat. Um, I lift like really heavy six days a week and I go to jujitsu three days a week. And I yell out a camera. You know what? I think it's kind of therapeutic. I think I have less stress than most people because I scream into a camera like seven days a week. Emily says, all right, thanks for the advice. Yeah, Emily, if you're... Here's what I'll tell you. Focus less on the uh, subscribers and focus more on the content you make. And make content that you're passionate about because uh, humans are are very intuitive in certain ways. In some ways, they're incredibly oblivious, but in other ways, they're intuitive, and they they can they can uh, feel if you're um, they can feel if you're passionate about, it, and they can they can feel if you're excited, and they can feel if you are faking it. So I think the only reason I have the coolest viewers in the world is because I actually am super excited about what I'm talking about. And, and I think these people that join me every week, I think they're excited about it too. So I th I th yeah, I think, I think often humans are, are, have very poor situational awareness and they're oblivious to certain things. But I think, um, I think when it comes to passion, uh, people are very in tune to that. What's my favorite cut of steak? Great question, Jonathan. Um, I love a good New York strip, dude, medium to medium rare with a nice crust, <sighs> no bones to get in the way. You can get it Kansas city, um, with the bone in if you want, that's good too. Um, but a good New York medium to medium rare, it doesn't have to be bleeding, but I like it darker pink. And that's, oof. I mean, I believe I'm not going to send back a porterhouse. I'm not going to send back a porterhouse by, by, 
by any means. But all I'm saying is you don't need to impress me with a big old tomahawk steak. I'd, I'd be fine with a, with a delicious New York baby or a ribeye. Heck yeah. The bone does add, add flavor. Sometimes I want a Kansas City steak, but, um, you know. Jory, would you consider taking up pipe smoking? I would not. I'm not into, I mean, I, I'm not like against it. I just, I've never been interested in any of that stuff. And, and uh, I'm, I don't know why I would start now at age 30. John says, well, it looks like I'm eating steak today again. Recording <laughs> right now? Oh, no, dude, I'm, I'm just talking to some people. You're good. Uh, because I was just thinking today, because where do you get this kind of a stand for this? Amazon. So it's just like a cell phone stand? It's literally a cell phone stand. Yeah. So I've never seen one, and I always want one. I was sick of holding my phone because my arm would get tired. So it's, I mean, you can hold it it's super lightweight. Light, yeah. And the cool thing is if you do use it to like take pictures, it has a little remote, but this thing's oh. like 15 bucks. Yeah, that's this is what I want to be able to bring on our Amazon. Ride. Amazon. I'm you telling you, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, I can't bring on the box. It's pretty lightweight. I could probably, I mean, it's sure it folds up. It's very lightweight. It, fo it folds up to about this tall. Like a foot. But, um, thank you. Yeah, man. It's like 15 bucks. Not bad. You eat steak to make that sound like a Hey, man, dude. You guys need it after you go cycling. Dude, how funny would it be if I told them my Amazon link and I was like, you can get it at, the, at my Amazon store. Scotty keeps telling me to watch my back, dude. Scotty, are you going to jump me or something? Do I need to do a, a, a jujitsu demonstration in real time? Guys, this is live television. <laughs> yeah, someone was asking me if, if uh, I think that fellow there wanted to know if I would get into pipe smoking. Um, never, never been into it. Never tried it. I've never smoked anything. Um, I don't even drink, so, yeah. Jake, we will find you, not if I find you first. Um, Green Spens, do you, can, do you prefer a conventional deadlift over a sumo deadlift? Uh, there is only one kind of deadlift. There's the deadlift. Sumo is not a deadlift. As far as I'm concerned, that should tell you everything you need to know. And I'm, yeah, suit. Taco says, can I get a wristwatch check? Let's do it. Let me get in, in out of the sun so I can see. Here, we got a little... Oh, yeah, right here. Right here is where it's at. Let me try to get the right amount of light to see the dial. There we go. Not a JLC. The Vacheron, baby. Yes, Paul. Dude, so many people complain about this bracelet because it doesn't touch each lug. Go look at old, old watches on bead of rice bracelets. Most of them do not touch the lugs. This is, this is from 1945. It's a period correct bracelet that came with the watch. And, and I have paperwork to prove it. Um, reading questions. Same car passed me three times. I believe it. Um, Dima says squatting, meaning what's better high or low bar. So th that, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a long explanation. People have different lengths in like anatomical lengths. And I know there's a joke in there somewhere, but cool it. 
So some people's torsos are longer than another person's torso. Some people's femurs are longer. Some people's lower legs, their t- tibia and fibula, are, are, are longer or shorter than another person. And some people's hips are wider set than other people's. So with all this being said, um, you high bar, like where you hold the bar on your back, high bar or low bar, because where you hold the bar, it's not just where the bar goes. It's also where your feet are and where your hips are. So, um, I don't know which one's better. What I will say is it's better. You got to decide that for yourself. I was originally a high bar squatter. Then I, then in my mid twenties, I changed to low bar squatting and, uh, that was really great. And I had a very wide stance and now I'm more, uh, I'm kind of back on high bar. William J. Certified T3 Bot says, Jory doesn't like smart watches, homage watches, Dan Henry, non-vintage, Invicta, or Shinola, and is not a big Citizen or Steinhardt fan. He prefers not to comment on other YouTubers. Amen to that. Sam Brooks says, are those different glasses? Nope, they're the same. Although I am going to go back to Warby Parker because I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple more pair. Because my brown ones, uh, one of the lenses got really scratched up. I think the cleaning cloth had something on it and I messed up one of the lenses. It's kind of a bummer. Why not invest in a pair of Mont Blanc glasses? I mean, if I was going to get a, a, a designer a designer glasses, I'd probably just get Cartier, but I don't see the point. And what, when, when I, I wish Warby Parker was paying me. They're not paying me, but when a company like Warby Parker exists, I don't understand why you would buy any other glasses. What's up, Joshua? This is Taka says, high bar cramps my traps. Well, high bar, you still have to hold it under your upper traps. High bar isn't on your C-spine. High bar is still underneath your traps. So it shouldn't cramp your traps. Low bar is below your shoulder line high bar is above above your shoulder line but under your traps dima you're exactly right that's exactly why i yeah i i feel you with that that's exactly why i don't feel the need to buy anything but warby parker William J. Certified Teacher Bus says, Jewish business consultant, freshly barbered, sipping Vietnamese coffee, wearing Warby Parker glasses, driving a Jeep Rubicon or Subaru STI, seven and a half inch wrist, much larger biceps. Connie is the love of his life. Amen. Joshua says, what should I do? Stay up late or do mukbang? Do a mukbang, dude. Make a bunch of noodles. Which watch do you wear to the gym? This Vacheron. I'm just kidding. Um, usually uh, a G-Shock. My G-Shock DW6600 is usually what I wear to the gym. Thirty old boomer. That's exactly why I do high bar now. It is much more comfortable. Also where my hips are. But it's much more comfortable because I have not to brag. I actually have pretty big traps. And it's much more comfortable to lay the bar right above my shoulder on my traps. <clears throat> Joshua, don't do any pranks, bro. Jonathan says, Jory in the gym straight grunting. Wearing his Rolex bubble pack. Dude, wouldn't that be hilarious ripping and gripping some fat deadlifts wearing a <laughs> bubble back from the 1940s? Chantown, California, certified T3 bot says, what do you think of the Royal Oak offshore? Uh, not a fan. I don't push it, Chi-Town. I just started liking Royal Oaks again. All right, so don't push it. Because if you tell if, if you start now trying to push me into these, these bigger, chunkier Royal Oaks, then I'm going to hate them all over again. I liked Royal Oaks, then I hated them again, then I like them. So don't push it. Emily says gotta go sadly god bless y'all and take care love well thank you so much for hanging out emily welcome to the channel hopefully you subscribe and uh i don't know have have some more fun with us 
Stephen Elias, certified T3 bot, says, what are some great green dial watches that aren't divers? Green dial watches that aren't divers, the Alpinist. Come on now. Joshua said, can you come to my house? Nah. I have a girlfriend my, my, and my mom won't let me. Um, Emily says, I did, uh, when will you do another live stream? I do a live stream every single, uh, every single Saturday. Jack, how do I, how do you feel about California dial? Um, I love California dials if they're done properly. I think the Beaufort, um, arrow timer did a very good job. And I think uh, Rolex my, with my Kirk Rich dial, my 2940 does a very good job with its uh, California dial. <laughs> Mr. Banana asks if he can come to your house, Joshua. Have Mr. Banana come over. Um, that sounds really messed up what I just said. Have Mr. Banana come to your house. Uh, I feel like ending the live stream right now. Um, James K, certified T3 and moderator, says the Hamilton is still available. Guys, um, I dropped the price on that Hamilton, that 1960s Hamilton, so freaking much. Uh, it's going to go back above 500 bucks um, on Monday. Do not miss out. I already feel bad raising the price on uh, on the King Seiko on Monday because that's going to have to go back up to 1500 bucks. But Someone buy those so I don't have to do that. People still want a wristwatch check. Says a 1945 Vacheron, small seconds, solid 18 karat gold. Factory gilt dial. This thing is freaking gorgeous. Kaiser's still laughing. I feel disgusted with the words that I've said. Lyndon said, are there any watches you decided to keep while hunting for the shop? Um, so, so this one, if I'm totally honest, I wasn't going to buy this for the shop, but I absolutely, I absolutely scour uh, the internet looked at, and, and everywhere else, but I, I, I have buddies, um, in the watch world that spend a whole lot of time looking up watches on the, uh, secondhand market. And what I mean by secondhand is, is it's not vintage, but they'll go on watch recon and they'll look for watches that, you know, other watch collectors are selling. Uh, and they, every day, every Every break they have at work, you know, they're on their phone on Watch Recon. They're scouring the secondhand market. They're on all the forums. And and because, you know, they're just, you know, kind of window shopping. Well, I do that, but in the, for the vintage market. And so I'm obsessively scouring the vintage market every, every chance I get. And um, I came across this one. And uh, I wasn't going to buy it for the shop, but it was kind of like I saw it and I couldn't get it out of my head. And so I ignored it for a week. And then I tried to ignore it the second week. And then halfway through the second week, I just bought it because I was like, man, I can't, I, I can't pass it. I can't pass up the price for this watch. Um, it's immaculate, solid 18 karat gold with period correct 18 karat gold bracelet. Black dial, factory black dial, which is already hard enough to find. Um, I, I, I couldn't pass it up. So yeah. James K says, I couldn't fight, fight this feeling anymore. Car guy, 427. One watch you saw for sale, but regret not getting the, the first thing that comes to mind is the, uh, is the blue moon. Blue moon. You saw me standing alone. No, but seriously, the, uh, the Seiko Presage Blue Moon, the, the original enamel dial. Um, I still kick myself thinking about that. I saw it for sale and then 
I was like, eh, I'm, I'm going to wait for a second. And then uh, I missed out. <laughs> um, and now they, you know, are selling for over 1500 So I was like, mm-hmm. but so that's one that, that I, I really regretted. Uh, and then I know there's another one that comes to mind. Oh, okay. There was an old tritium dial mill sub that I saw for sale, uh, a couple years back for under 10 grand and had all the proper markings. It was on a bracelet. It had the perfect domed crystal. It looked gorgeous, perfect bezel. Um, and I didn't, I did just straight up. This was a few years back. I did not have the money for that watch. So I just had to let it go. And of course it sold, but that's, that's one that got away also on me. I feel like I was like, "Mm." so that's another one. So the blue enamel and then this one, but I know how crappy that feels. So I was like, you know what? I saw this watch and I'm like, I'm not going to let this one get away because I want it so bad. But DJ Hungzilla. Donatus wants a wristwatch check and I'm happy to oblige because this is a new watch. Well, it's an old watch, but it's new to me. 1945. Vacheron small seconds. Super comfortable on the wrist, guys. <clears throat> Someone asked me if I got rid of my Reverso for this, and I was like, what? That was my 30th birthday huge grail. Hell no, I didn't get rid of my Reverso. Emily says, sorry, I forgot to ask. How many watches do you have? Um, Emily, I can't answer that because uh, my better half watches my live streams. Uh, my girl watches my uh, content and I am not allowed to... Uh... Well, I'll just say this. I have 10. Because that's the number I told Connie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Connie knows I have way more than that. I have, I have too many and still not enough. So, yeah. Um, James K certified T through bot says per William J certified T through bot. It's time to bring this ship to shore and buy the Hamilton at the time teller shop link there. Um, Emily, God bless. Have a great weekend. Uh, reading companies, read or reading companies, somewhat reading uh, comments. Someone had a question about the shop, I think. I was hoping David Beckham would have an appearance on the, on the live stream. I heard the time teller got a Vacheron. Well, guess what? Nothing will ever compare to this beacon of light I saw in a little pawn shop in London, close by to where I live. It called out to me and I said, hold on, Victoria. Shut the kids up for two seconds. I see something. And upon further inspection, I saw it was a Tudor, a Tudor Submariner, the best watch in the world. Spice up your life. And scene. What is this question? Um, DJ Hungzilla asked a question about the shop. Let me see. I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Someone's asking a question about the shot. What was DJ Hungzilla? Oh, DJ Hungzilla asked about how to request a specific watch to the shop. Um, there should be a link to the watch sourcing section, watch sourcing service. Probably going to get rid of that service until January when I can get a legal team to write up um a deposit system because we've spent way too much time um, finding uh, watches for, for people who back out on the deal and, and people that, that don't want uh, stuff from that don't want the sourced watches. So, yeah. 
Uh, James K says, current link to the store. Uh, need to put some of the new Casios on the Amazon store. Scotty, you're right. And I have a new episode about uh, some some of the new Casios for 2019 uh, coming out next week. So I'm definitely going to update my list for sure. Would you ever get a Patek Nautilus vintage? Well, there really aren't not vintage Nautiluses um, as we see. That. There really isn't, so probably not. I'm not a huge Nautilus guy, by the way. Um, I'm a fan of the titanium G-Shock that's coming out. The all-titanium G-Shock. Ronan says... Yo, put the Mudmaster on the T3 shop. Uh, it's there. Now, the um, the Carbon Core G Mudmaster, I did not add there because I don't like it, and I explained why in that episode. Uh, John says, stay in the collection. John, when you get me to 100,000 subscribers, I, I swear to you, I will do a stay of the collection episode. Travis says, your thoughts on the Breitling Aerospace? That's a Breitling I don't really like. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't like the styling of the uh, of the bezel, and I don't like the dual displays on it. I know Jody just got one, and all the, all the best to him, and I hope he wears it in good health, and I hope he enjoys it. And I have a couple buddies that have them and love them. It's a great watch. It's an absolute it's, – it's, it's an amazing watch. I'm not discrediting the watch at all. You asked me how I felt about it. And I, there's a reason why I don't have one in my collection. And that's just, that's why. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jody and you're watching just one more watch. Samuel says, I absolutely love your channel. I absolutely love you, man. Thank you so much. Nathan says, did I just hear you say you're not into Gen Gerald Genta designs? I think they're played out. I don't think they're as amazing uh, I, I think they were really innovative at the time, but nowadays it's, it's a dime a dozen. Everyone has Gerald Genta inspired designs. It's, it's not anything new. I think, uh, Shy Town, okay. Shy Town's offended by my Scottish accent. Don't care. Um, the Apple watch Waba, I'm not a fan of. It's, it's not a real watch in my opinion. It's just a phone on your wrist. Can you recommend a vintage with 24 hour dial, 38 millimeters, not Russian? Remember, no Russian. Well, I have to go to my store or my store. I have to go to my computer to look it up. I was going to say my reference, uh, but I'm on my phone right now. So I can't, I can't, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Brian says, any thoughts on a wash wedding gift? A buddy of mine's getting married in six months and I want to give him something he can wear. Still look nice with a dress shirt. I mean, what's your what's your budget, right? Because like you could do you could do a, a vintage date just or you could do an Orient Bambino. Excuse me. Hiccups. <laughs> Dean with the all-star comment says, wearing an Apple watch makes you look like a Spy Kids cast member. shy California said, uh, um, Jory finds Dan Henry unoriginal and boring. That's exactly right. I'm, I, uh, will not, I will never recommend Dan Henry on this channel ever. Herman says, well, the 34 millimeter vintage Omega look too small on my seven and a half inch wrist. Which one? Probably not though, because I, this is 35 millimeters and I have over a seven and a half inch wrist. 
or you have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. My bad. Um, this is, this is 35 millimeters. And, uh, I have almost an eight inch wrist, so no, it will not. I think people are, I think people are too concerned with how the watch is written on paper. Look at pictures. You'll be fine. I promise you. What do I think of the Boulder Odyssey, Cowboy? I like the Boulder Odyssey. I've, I've had experience with a couple of them. I've worn one extensively. Uh, it's, a, it's a solid watch, but it's a whole lot of watch. That's what I'll say. Chattown, California, the Time XQ is overhyped. Vince Goodrum in the building. What's going on, Vince? What's up, man? Oh, Chevy guy says JLC Reverso or new Vacheron. Um, probably my JLC because that was a huge grail for me. I've always wanted a, a, a JLC. I've wanted a Reverso before I knew really about Vacheron. It just so happens that as I learned more about watches, I realized that Vacheron is, is by far the best company out of the Holy Trinity. By far. Mr. Russell, uh, DM me on Instagram and send me pictures of the watch you're looking at. Ronan says, where do you buy your Vietnamese coffee? <clears throat> well, I go to Lee Sandwiches sometimes. I go to a place called Seven Leaves sometimes. And then here uh, in this little neighborhood, there's a little uh, family-owned cafe. I think they're Korean, but really, really nice. And um, so I guess technically it's Korean iced coffee. Uh, but they're, it's a very sweet family, so. Lee Sandwiches. No, you're the boss. I love this. I love these comments, dude. Samuel goes, what's the best dress watch on the market between 34 to 36 millimeters for around $200? Name five examples. No, you do it. <laughs> Eric says, are you religious? Um, I mean, I, could, I try not to talk about politics or religion on the channel, but yeah, I, I believe in God. For sure, I believe in God. That's why I say God bless all the time. Psyduck says, Pambino, done. <laughs> Amen to that. Your take on Sky Dwellers. Uh, I think they wear much bigger than they should, if I'm if I'm totally honest and truthful. But um, I think I think super uh, super. I think certain ones look gorgeous. Uh, for instance, um, probably my favorite Sky Dweller is the Everose with the gunmetal dial. <sighs> Or I think they might call it slate or something, but that di that dial is that combination is gorgeous. Another one is the standard, you know, blue dial, um, but yeah, gorgeous. Edwin, how many Seikos is too many Seikos? I don't know. I haven't reached that limit yet. Sam Brooks, Amen. God made this God's green flat Earth. Dave Nolan says, do you believe in witches? I don't know. Have you met my mother-in-law? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Got him. <laughs> Any thoughts on Christopher Ward's C65 military watches? I haven't seen them a whole lot. What I will say is they're um, they're, uh, I think they call it their vintage. 
man, it, w- it was whichever one was at the end of the list for my uh, my fall episode, fall 2019 episode of this week. That one looks freaking sick. Jack says, do you think the sub will get an upgrade? Man, <sighs> Basel World's getting less and less interesting to me because of because of all the hype around Rolex specifically. I don't know. I don't know yet. I I, I tried... See, there's all this hype bef- right before Basel World. And then I go through, like, Basel World recaps, and then I go through, like, withdrawal, where I try to just flush it out of my system. I'm not going to try to even think about that until we get a little bit closer. <clears throat> James K, certified T3 bot and moderator, says, it's the final countdown. Uh, don't miss out on the price drop at the time teller shop. Hamilton is still available despite my best efforts. Thank you, James. Samuel, this is so frustrating. Samuel says, haha, I am just curious. I want to buy a new vintage dress watch. So what's the best option? Go to the time teller shop, dude. There is, there is a serviced with one year warranty, 100% authentic, vintage Omega Seamaster, and it's not a Cal 1020. It has a really, really, really good movement in it. Number two, there's a freaking Hamilton 10 karat rolled gold, uh, freaking immaculate dial from the 1960s. Go to the time teller shop, please just go there. Psyduck says, will we ever see a, a T3 watch? Someone asked me that yesterday. It's not something I'm interested right now in doing. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm much more interested in finding really cool watches for other people. Not so much interested in making my own yet. We'll see what happens in the future. Vince says, sorry for the late response. No new pieces in for me, but I'm, but with doing Logan Paul's video, you plan to do any more YouTube celebs? Um, I do what Vince, I do whatever, uh, people tell me in my inbox. <laughs> So, uh, if they, if, if they, I don't, I am not at all interested in Logan Paul. Um, but enough people mentioned him consistently and he had two interesting watches to talk about. So I was like, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll mention it. The funny thing is some of my older demographic commented and they're like, who the heck is Logan Paul? So that's, that is funny. Thirty-year-old boomer. That's a great question. Maybe I'll make an episode about that. My ideal watch, if I made one, <clears throat> and I couldn't get really give you an answer right now because I'd actually have to sit down and and, and kind of do a little checklist. But well, let me think about it. My bros. Best dress watch is an Invicta Sea Hunter 63 millimeter. Oh, good God. James K says, run, don't walk to, over to the T3 shop. Nick Olick says, uh, what's, what's your process for finding these watches for the T3 shop? Well, I scour the vintage market until something catches my eye. And then once I see something, I look further into that. Then I have references to make sure that it's good on my end. or or that it's good on their end. And then I do exactly what I tell you to do. I ask questions. I make sure that I'm educated about the watch before I even talk to the seller. And then I ask for a bunch of pictures to make sure that there's even less of a hangup when I get the watch here. Once I get the watch, I take it personally over to my watchmakers. Head watchmaker inspects it, services it, cleans it. Anything's wrong, he lets me know. We haven't had any issues yet. Um, one person has had to send their watch back because they overwound it. And then, um, we're getting that fixed right now, but they're, they're a very good customer. So I'm not, I'm not upset with them about that. Um, but other than that, there's been absolutely zero issues. Uh, and then, um, once the watchmaker says everything's good to go, I take the watches back. I hold on to them. Uh, they're secure until they get purchased. Then I have a pre-shipment inspection. Then they get packaged. Then they get sent out. Kenny says, my bad. Uh, Kenny's owning up to it. Um, Yeah, so once 
yeah, that's 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 the only issue we've had is that some is that Kenny overwound a, a chronograph. But other than that, he's a great he's a great a great 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 customer. So he he there's no issue. Heber Rocha Costa says, I live in Africa and the T3 website does not load. I've tried several times and nothing. Hey, can one of my moderators, sorry, Siren, or, or anyone out there that loves me enough, can one of you make sure that the, that the site works? I mean, someone bought something. So I, I'm, I'm James. Yeah, I guess you're the only moderator. Here. I'm, I think the site works. I don't know. I haven't had any sales in Africa yet, so. Thoughts on Long Island SKX alternative? I haven't looked into it thoroughly, but Mark's a great guy, and I hope that he is very successful in that endeavor because he he's been on YouTube since before any of us, and um, I've purchased watches from Long Island Watch. Uh, he's a great dude, and um, yeah, he, he's the man. So I hope he's very successful. Bubba says, Mark is good people. You're good people, Bubba. That fellow there says, was just on the site. It looks fine. Amen. Yeah. Unfortunately, it might be where you, where you are. I don't know if there's restrictions uh, or you have restricted internet access or, or what, but I've also never had any sales in Africa. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I wish I could help you. I'm going to, I'll look into that. Mr. Russell says T3 shop works in Singapore. Nicolette says, okay, so I love vintage watches, but I'm afraid of buying anything vintage that's not a Seiko 5 because I fear that I won't be able to find parts for them if needed. Any tips? Um, I don't buy watches like that. I don't have that concern, which might be odd, but, but I'm not terribly concerned. Like, I bought this and I'm not terribly concerned about finding the parts for it. I'm just trying to enjoy it and take care of it. Um... In fact, I probably wouldn't buy a vintage Seiko 5 because I think it, it would be not very easy to service. That's probably one that I wouldn't buy. But, um, I mean, Bevku says, how do your watch... I hate that. Someone else asked me, um, who services, with quotation marks, your watches? Do you guys think that it's me? Like I'm like just tinkering with the watches. My watchmaker, you can go to tiktokwatchrepair.com. My my head watchmaker is the founder of TikTok watch repairs. He's doing the work on the watches. Uh, and and he's posted multiple stories of him working on my watches. So if, if you want to go on Instagram, he has all the watches disassembled, cleaned, serviced, and, and put back together. So, uh, yeah, and he's done two of my personal watches. So, it's so it's so funny. Bevku is a good uh, viewer too. So I don't I don't understand where it might just be me how I read the question, but it seemed kind of passive. How do your watchmakers? It's so funny, man. That's a that's a pet peeve of mine. And then when people start or finish sentences with dot, with the ellipses dot dot dot. Because it's like, hmm, hmm, it's like, oh, uh, ooh, almost spilled my coffee. It says TikTok watches on Melrose. Uh, I don't know TikTok watches. No, TikTok watch repair, which is on Sunset. Who services my watches? None of your business. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being as transparent as possible. Guy does great work. James K says, Jory opens the case back of the watches with a screwdriver and sprays WD-40 on it to make sure. Yeah, I just flood the case with WD-40. <laughs> Cowboy Swine with the super chat says, what do you think of the actual markup is on a Vacheron Constantine uh, Constant Patrimony? 
Ugh. I mean, the, let's be clear. The materials they use are very good, and the amount of time they spend on the watch is very good. <laughs> or, 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 I mean, the amount of time they spend on the watch is incredible, I'm sure, is what I meant by saying very good. Um, it would be hard for me to, to conceptualize that. You have very interesting questions, cowboy. Who services the beard? Uh, my barber's named Rosie. Um, I wrote it like that because I wasn't sure if the watchmakers were independent or bossed by you. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I'm in charge of the watches that go, that are my watches that are, that go through to him, but I'm not breathing down his neck because that's the whole point of delegation of services, right? Like, like I'm in, like I am technically my two editors bosses or, or that was really poor English. I'm technically the boss of my two editors but I'm not breathing down their necks because I'm not, that's not my field of expertise. That's their job. So that's, do you, do you see what I'm saying? So I might be in charge of the watchmaker who's working on my watches, but I'm not breathing down his neck because he, that's, that's his job. Delegation of, of, uh, of services. Yeah. That's capitalism. That's, that's important. Your comment about the Omega 1020 interested me, blah, 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 Yeah. So the reason I said that is because <clears throat> unless you have a good service history, um, amen, Kenny, I'm not a micromanager. I understand that if I can get people that know more than me about a certain area, it would be foolish for me to still try to hold on to the reins. One of the biggest reasons businesses fail is uh, lack of delegation. OK, most most young companies, the 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 business owner doesn't understand that they're not a good businessman. Just because you own a business does not mean you're a businessman it means you're a business owner. Right. So a lot of these younger companies, even even companies that have been around, but they haven't flourished. Uh, it's because they see their product or their service as their baby. So they don't want to share it with another person. So what ends up happening is. It was very, very difficult for me to even hire another editor because that editor would see the mess ups, would see me have to do another take. They'd see me, you know, being like, oh, oh, oops, oops, let me do that again or blah, 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 blah. And that was kind of weird and it made me vulnerable. But just like I said, get out of your comfort zone. I put my foot down and, and I hired someone. And guess what? The, the content became that much better because he knows more than me about editing. And then we brought on another person to do another channel and to do the thumbnails because guess what? They, they know more than me. And uh, I'm not going to service the watches by myself because I don't know anything about watch servicing. I'm not a watchmaker. Um, so, yes. William J. with the uh, very, very important Sean Connery trivia. Anyway, uh, 1020, um, I'm so sorry, they're your old boomer. Let's talk about the Omega Caltown 20. Um, unless you have a service, or I'm sorry, unless you find an Omega 1020 that has a service history that is, is in very clean condition, ideally with some type of guarantee, I probably wouldn't get it. And the reason is because that movement is notoriously finicky. Why? Well, it has a day date complication and the gears in that specific movement, they sometimes like to bind or overlap each other. And when that happens, sometimes a watchmaker can simply take the case back off and put realign the teeth of the gears. But sometimes the gears overlap, they bind and people keep trying to move the crown and fix it and fix it and fix it. And then the, the 
gears shear, and that becomes an issue. And so unless you have one that has been well-kept and that has been maintained and ideally serviced, uh, the 1020s can be a headache. Luckily, I've had a few 1020s at my store. I personally own an Omega. My Seamaster is a 1020. I've had a few 1020s at the store, and they have been serviced. And they come with a guarantee. So that, again, the people that come to my store can buy it without any fear of, of it getting messed up. Um, but yeah, the I love my Omega uh, Seamaster Cal 1020. I also understand it's probably not Omega's best movement. Khalid says gray market dealers. Um, I, I, as far as the gray market goes, I would only shop at Amazon because Amazon protects you 100%. You don't like it or it's, uh, or it is, um, broken or, or you're not sure of it. You just return it. No questions asked and Amazon will help you. That's why when people say don't buy watches from Amazon, don't listen to them. Always buy your modern watches from Amazon. And Kenny says he just bought a winder for his 1020. That is exactly the right thing to do, Kenny, because uh, someone else, I think it was Chi-Town, California, he asked um, which watch I keep on my winder 24-7, and it's my Omega Cal 1020, um, because I don't want that thing dying, because resetting it is, is typically, it doesn't mean that it can never die. It doesn't mean that you can't let it die, because if you, if you reset it, it's going to break. I'm just saying, that's one watch that you want to have running, ideally, because when that thing dies, resetting the date, that, that's, that's the danger zone. I wish I was sponsored by Amazon. You should do an entire show in a Scottish accent. No, I will not do that. That would, dude. What if I could? What if I couldn't get out of that crappy Scottish accent? What if, like, my brain like switched, and I couldn't stop speaking in like this terrible British accent? Levku says, "How much?" Uh, Tom Raham says, "Give me those sweet, sweet price drops." Go to the store, dude. Take advantage until Monday. Um, Bevku says, how old much a, must a watch be in order to count as vintage? Great question. So, <laughs> Connie taught me this. And you can learn a lot from fashion vloggers. I know people that are into fashion, they'll tell you what's vintage. So, I guess uh, any item that is 30 years old or older is... Uh, is technic is is considered vintage. I don't think there's any actual rule, but I guess in commodities, anything that is thirty year old, thirty years old, uh, is considered vintage, and anything that's well past that is considered antique. I suppose. I don't know. Tomahawk says, "Just one more mo watch, Jory and Jody tag team episode." Well, uh, let's just say, Jody wrote to me on Instagram the other day. We talk back and forth uh, regularly, but we spoke on Instagram last week. He wrote to me, we're going to set something up uh, to do a live stream together because uh, sh we're going to have to kind of set it up in advance because of the time difference. Uh, we happen to be on different sides of the world, but yeah. So don't worry, that's coming. Famous people like Jory and Jody talk. I'm not famous, but if one of us is famous, it's Jody. It's not me. Oh, watch Zell's here. We can get down to business and he can uh, write some more sarcastic comments. Oh, Vince says, what do you think about that Odell Beckham wearing a 250,000 watch on the field playing football and getting fined? And then it ends up that he was actually like marketing for Daniel Wellington and it might have been the biggest, most genius marketing thing ever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's it, 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 It's crazy. 
Sarcasm is a form of flattery. I thought it was imitation. Oh, dude, we got some shade, baby. Finally, we got some shade down here. Chi-Town, California, that's actually very true. Richard Meal is like G-Shock for rich people with no taste. Car guy, are you going to do more Instagram live streams? I might start doing that on Fridays because some of my Instagram followers enjoyed that. We'll see. It's not going to be long form like this. Scotty says, Jory, you are too famous. Definitely not, but I appreciate that. Some, some kid, I think he was like 16. He might be here now. If you're here, what's going on, bro? He wrote to me on, he, he wrote to me on Instagram. And he asked a question about a watch and I replied to him. And he goes, he goes, oh my God, this is the first time a celebrity ever spoke to me. I'm like, I'm like, first of all, what's going on? Second of all, not a celebrity. Hello, welcome to Jory and Jody's live stream. You're, you're watching Just One More Watch Time Teller. Watch this says, okay, real question. If the market crashes, will many of these watch YouTube channels go away? I don't see why that, I don't see why. Um, if the market crashes, people will still be interested in watches just because they can't, <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, So uh, I'm reading comments. So just because the market crashes and just because people might have, if, if the market crashes and people have less, less spending money, doesn't mean people will be less interested in watches. It just means they won't necessarily be able to buy as many. I think it'll be fine. But yeah, Zal, if the, if the market crashes, I'm going to quit. Is that what you want? Is, is that what you want to hear? Parrots. Uh, Kaiser says, Jory, so few people that actually reply to IG messages. Yeah, well, you know, I do my best. I get a lot of messages and I try to take take down as many as possible every day. Illuminati here is here certified T3 by and moderator. Kenny, it is a beautiful day, man. It was raining last week. Now it's, it's nice and sunny. I kind of want the rain, though. I kind of want uh, autumn weather, but I, I, I can't complain. As long as it's nice next weekend, because Connie and I are going camping next weekend. Hungzilla says, wait, if people have no money for watches, then of course interest in watches will dip. Well, uh, I think consumer reports will say otherwise, if I'm totally honest. Because people, even in... Uh, even in like some recessions, uh, the entertainment and like, uh, other industries have done quite well. So yeah, Kenny, we're going to film it for time away. Um, because people still want to, especially when you, when you're talking about YouTube channels, right? So just because consumer consumerism doesn't stop in a recession. So people want things that make them feel good. So in a recession, if people have less to do or whatever, people are, 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 in fact, YouTube viewership might go up. There, there could be an argument for that as well. So we'll see when it happens, right? This is all speculation until it actually happens. Later, Vince. Bernard says, hey, Jory, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> What's going on, dude? You're on the air. Illuminati certified teeth through and moderator says, Hey guys, I have one question. What the heck is up with the likes?
Yeah, Bernard, I have seen the uh, reissue of the Arnie. Kind of disappointing because it has a like a, a plastic shroud, and that's meant to protect the watch. So it's it's just bummed me out. Jack says, hey, I'm considering uh, getting an STI. How do you like it as a daily driver? Well, I'm kind of not the right person to ask because I ruin every car every car I've ever owned. Um, I own it for like a month and then I start just gutting it and, and doing really stupid modifications. Like the 370, I, I, okay. So my Jeep, my Jeep Rubicon, right? I had it for a while and then I totally changed the suspension, the gearing, wheels, tires, everything, right? So it has super low gears, five and a half inch lift, 35 inch tires, gets like eight miles per gallon, it's an absolute beast, but it's not great to drive on the highway. So what did I do? A few years later, I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to get, like, like the Jeep was paid off. And I was like, I'm, I need to get a daily driver because I live in Los Angeles now. Because when I first got, when I got the Jeep, I was in New Hampshire, but brought it out here to Los Angeles. I was like, okay, I live in Los Angeles right now. This is not a great commuter for the traffic or the highways. I need a daily driver. So um, I got, uh, I got uh, the piece of a leaf hit me. I got a uh, 370, got a 370Z. And I was like, okay, I'm going to keep this the way it is and just enjoy it because this is my daily driver. Um, so what happened like a few months in, I, I gutted the suspension, um, new control arms, uh, toe arms, coil, like really stiff coil overs, um, three inches from the headers back, had full Accutech tune, um, the thing would spit flames, uh, inside totally gutted. It was a track beast and I was single when, when I first had it. So it was just me riding around in it and I loved it. But then when I met Connie, you know, it was fun at first and, and she, Ooh, it's loud. Ooh. <laughs> and she, I think she liked it. But then as we would, you know, drive on things, any little crack in the road, you would feel, doo -doo -doo. and it was, dude, the thing would handle, but it was loud and when we were at stop like if we were at a stop you start smelling gasoline because it was very very it was it was running pretty lean and uh did i mentioned it shot flames <laughs> so so that thing was crazy so then i got the sti i got recently um sti is not even a year old so um have the sti let's see i've done I've been good. Okay. I've owned just under a year of ownership of the STI and I've been a good boy. I have the Borla S type exhaust. Um, I have the full rally innovations front end. Uh, you can see that on, on Instagram, shout out to rally innovations. Uh, and I have, uh, the rally armor mud flaps and that's all that's, I think that's it. I've been a very, very good boy so far, but I'm not lowering it. I might get white line sway bars soon um, just to m minimize some of the body roll, but I'm not, I don't see why anybody would buy a, a, a rally car and lower it. I think that's really stupid. So sorry. That was a rant, but as a daily driver, it is incredible. It has a ton of space. Uh, gas mileage is not great though <laughs> in comparison to other, uh, other uh, four cylinders probably not going to go straight to stage three. I think that would be silly, right? I think you should go stage two. But also a lot of idiot, like vape gods, a lot of idiot kids, they're all about, oh, stage three, stage two, you got to give it more power. Okay. The car as it comes is, will outperform most people's driving abilities. Okay. That I might be old now that I'm 30, but that thing is, is way fast enough for me. Okay. It's faster than my 370 already. Um, so, but I don't need more power. And I purposefully waited for this one because I knew it had the, uh, the six piston Brembo brake. So the brakes, the stopping power is good. The go power is good. The only thing I'd probably change as far as like another modification would be, uh, white line sway bars, get rid of some, some body roll. <clears throat>
Jory is 30. Car, I'll have to check it out. Maybe I'll use it on some of my older, older, older watches. Justin, you should have stopped buying Panerai's like three years ago. <laughs> Single hand watches are pretty cool, actually, Bernard. Bevku says, I think you can do arm wrestling, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> Gerald Wood NY says, I'm always in recession and I watch all the watch channels. <laughs> you guys are funny. Justin says, I'm buying another today. Do it. Um, I wouldn't. Demo, what should Panerai do? Panerai should stop arbitrarily raising their prices and stop saying that everything is limited edition. That's a huge problem from Panerai. Yeah. And get a hold of, of the stupid counterfeit market that has them by the throat right now. What should Rolex do? Rolex is fine. Yeah, see, you're kind of stuck there, Justin, because I wouldn't buy a Panerai pre-owned anymore. What's my favorite G-Shock, Mr. Banana? DW6600 right now, I really like. Archie Preston says, hey man, love your channel. Well, I love you, Archie. Thanks so much for stopping by. Anthony, congratulations on your Seiko Turtle. He says, I got my first automatic watch yesterday, the Seiko Turtle, thanks to your recommendations. And I'm loving it. Well, you you made a good decision, brother. Dima says, yeah, that's fair enough point. Buying a used Panerai is risky AF. Edwin says, am I wrong for being insanely excited for the blue alpinist that's about to be delivered to me? No, you're not insane because that watch is sick. Justin says, thanks for responding so much to my comments. First time a YouTuber ever responded. I try not to think of myself as a YouTuber. I'm a, pretty, I'm a normal person. I mean, YouTubers are typically normal people, but what I'm trying to say is YouTubers often don't think of themselves as normal people. Harry says, thanks for your review of the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot. I have one now and I love it every day. Dude, that's that's uh, that, that's one of my favorite everyday watches. For sure. Salmon Alpinist? Salpinist? I don't know how that would even look, if I'm honest. Anthony says, where can I get affordable, good quality NATO? Um, if you have bigger wrists like me, then I would check out Wrist Candy Watch Club. Because uh, they're the only NATO straps that I found that are affordable that also fit my wrist properly. Illuminati certified T3 by M moderator says, I would like to see the likes get as high as Snoop Dogg. <laughs> That's pretty high. That's pretty dang high. David says, or Dave, I'm so sorry, says, hey, Jory, I'm late to the party today. What's what's rocking on your wrist? Let's take a look, guys. 
How tall am I in centimeters? I don't know, dude. I'm American, dude. Three, three inches. 1945. Basher on small seconds. Factory gilt dial, 18 karat gold. Period correct. 18 karat bracelet. Watch the, what's left on your grail. Probably a 36 millimeter white gold president. Big watch for a 1945. I know, man. Had to jump on it. Justin Davison says, Sincerely enjoy the comedy in your videos. It's hysterical. I know Watchbox gets a lot of views, but those reviews are so dry. And if they were a review of a car, they would be called a used car salesman. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, dude. A lot of people... Um, a lot of people get upset with me because I don't take watches. I don't take urology seriously enough. Ugh. You're only allowed to like things the way we want you to like things, Jory. Oh, well. But yeah, what's left on my grail list? Probably a Rolex 1016. And a uh, Rolex 36 mil white gold president. Man, I would love to get a white gold present. Show the guns. <clears throat> Shout out California. No way. Watches are supposed to be painful, unfunny investment pieces. Illuminati certified T3 bot and moderator says, Jory, if you tell me your height and feet, I'll convert them to centimeters. Uh, six. I don't know how many. I literally do not know how many centimeters that is. Um, don't forget the H E two. Yeah, well, that's obvious, man, but that's... Oh. Dude, Scotty's got my sticks, man. Gotta watch out for, for that family and their young kids. Scotty's got my six. He's my eye in the sky. Yeah, the Creator HE2 is, is, is a... Uh, that's an all-time grail. I mean, I just see the prices keep going up and up on that. And it's... Uh, okay, so North Cuber says 182 centimeters. Illuminati says, Jory is a mighty 182 centimeters tall. So how many centimeters my wrist? So uh, this is going to be much easier. <laughs> Seven and a half inches. So how many centimeters is that? How many stone do you weigh? Man, I don't... 225, but I don't know how many stone that is. 225 pounds. How many stone is that, guys? Nineteen oh five. That's how many centimeters? We need Jory's vital signs. <laughs> You guys want to know my uh, horoscope also? Sixteen stone. I'm not a Taurus, dude. Can you guys guess my uh, my horse or my um, yeah horoscope, right? My sign. Can you guys guess that? North Cuber, channel member. Guys, I got to, uh, <laughs> my last four digits of my credit card. You guys want my social also? Um, North Cuber, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I could not do the amount of content that I do here uh, without you guys because, honestly, 
um, with all the, there, there are, to be quite honest, a lot of moving parts on the channel now. Um, everybody, please welcome North Huber. Uh, you guys do not have to support the channel, but you do out of, out of goodness of your heart. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, we do four pieces of content a week on the Time Teller channel. We do one a week on the Time Away channel. I have two editors, a watchmaker, um, a ton of people, you guys all helping me out. And we couldn't do all of this without you guys. You know, the, the channel, the channel itself is a whole lot of work, but, um, the, the store is like a beast of its own. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a, it's a lot. So thank you so much, guys. Channel members, you keep this thing going. You freaking rock. So that, what watch brand you have a love-hate relationship with? That's a good question. Like... I like a lot of Panerais. They just freaking like upset me <laughs> because they like cannot stop messing themselves up. They cannot get out of their way. No, Tudor, I don't love hate. Tudor, I just hate. Um, I wish Panerai would get out of their own freaking way. That It's just so frustrating. But, guys... Unfortunately, we are done with the Vietnamese coffee, and this is telling me that my batteries are running out anyway. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, beautiful Saturday. Johnny watches. Have a great one. Kenny's here. Have a great one. Dima. Everybody. Remember to get out of your freaking comfort zone. Get out of your freaking comfort zone. North Huber, thank you so much. Uh, to no, I don't own any sneakers, Beck. <laughs> um, yeah, seriously, Illuminati with the super chat. Thank you, dude. You rock, man. You rock so much. Love you, Kenny. You got you freaking rock, Kenny. Um, guys, before we run out of batteries again, um, also g give a round of applause to my moderators. They did a lot of good work today. James, you took the brunt of, of the force today. Thank you to my moderators. Um, Guys, real quick, just last pitch, last reminder. Um, all the watches are going back up to their normal prices on uh, Monday, October seventh. Uh, I'm so I'm, I'm I'm so surprised the King Seiko has not sold yet. It's we've cut the price six hundred dollars, uh, selling for for nine ninety one. So check out the King Seiko guys. Check out the uh, the Hamilton there. That's that Hamilton's going back up to to five hundred bucks. Um, the freaking Omega that is there is, is in the 700s guys, check it out. They're going back up in price on Monday. So, um, do not miss out, get out of your comfort zone, do something that makes you scared, uh, makes you a little uncomfortable. It'll all be worth it. I promise you gotta, life's too short, man. Life's too short to try to stay in your comfort zone. It, 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 it won't help you out in the end. Get out of your comfort zone. That's number one. Number two, tell someone you love them. Because you shouldn't go a moment without telling someone you love them. If you feel down in the dumps, often extending love to another person will make you feel better. So I'm going to start it off. I love you guys, each and every one of you. I hope you have a blessed, amazing weekend. Um, it, it was the Jewish New Year very recently, so Happy New Year to everyone. May you all be written in the book of life. And uh, I hope you just have a blessed, amazing week. I will see you on on excuse me on Monday. And also... Uh, I believe tomorrow or maybe later tonight, a time away episode might be coming out. So that'll be fun too. I'll see you over there, but, um, I'll have to talk to Dallin, my, my other editor about that, but guys, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for, uh, checking out this live stream and I will see you definitely on Monday for another fun episode. And, uh, yeah, you guys rock. So guys, I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember I didn't invent time. I just tell it. All right. Love you guys. God bless.